it, it was a very large uh, container ship. And so um, given that, I'm given the fact that it impacted that, that pier just apparently um, from the videos um, head on, I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the bridge is designed to span a certain distance. Um, it relies on those supports. Um, if one of those supports is gone, um, of course, bridges are, are constructed with factors of safety, but, um, you know, not that kind of factor of safety. It seems to me that the, the bridge itself, the superstructure, um, you know, was not the, was not the issue. The issue was that it wasn't, you know, the pier itself wasn't designed to uh, resist that large of an impact to the kind of vessel. This is a three-span continuous uh, steel truss bridge um, with sort of an arched uh, truss in its uh, center span. Um, what that means is, uh, is basically all three spans of that truss are connected to each other. So we can, you know, we can we can build bridges so that we have three independent uh, truss trusses um, supported by these four piers, or we can connect them. Um, and when we connect them, there's a lot of efficiency to be had um, because there's a lot of load sharing that can happen among the trust members. Um, but it also means that, you know, when this pier was, was struck, um, it not only impacts the two spans that were directly supported by that pier, um, but it impacts the, the span that uh, you know, apparently was pretty far from the pier. Um, but in reality, it was actually connected um, by the truss. So I, I think the, the example that a lot of folks are drawing comparisons to right now is the Sunshine Skyway uh, bridge collapse in Tampa um, in 1980. Um, this, this happened a few years after the key bridge was constructed. Um, but, I, but it was similar in that it was a three-span continuous uh, steel truss bridge. Um, also, um, uh, you know, in, within a shipping channel, and um, and it was struck by a cargo ship, um, and uh, and also collapsed. Uh, you know, unfortunately, when there's when there's a tragedy like this, um, you know, we we learn from these mistakes, right? And or we learn from these experiences. Um, and so, in that case. Um, uh, I believe that there were changes made to um, the bridge specifications and that um, uh, in terms of peer protection systems. So um, either uh, ensuring that um, a peer is designed for a particular impact load of a shipping vessel or uh, that it has uh, protections in place to um, absorb that, that load. So a, a truss bridge, um, sort of in its simplest terms, is when you is made out of a series of triangles. Um, so uh, anytime you see um, any type of structure, not just a bridge structure, it could be a, um, a telecommunications tower that's that's sort of triangulated. So you can see lots of triangles that that make up that structure. That's a truss, um, and a truss is really uh, efficient because it carries loads. Um, with you know, that are applied to the full structure, it carries those loads by developing tension and compression forces within each of the members. So either just a straight pull, which is tension, or a push, which is compression, um, and that's a really efficient way to carry load. I I'm not sure. I think it's too early to to, to say how um, how long it might take to to construct the bridge, uh, reconstruct the bridge. Um, the the other uh, complication about this bridge collapse, right? It's not just the, the uh, vehicle transportation network; it's also the Port of Baltimore um, sits on you know one side of this bridge, and so um, you know I think getting that back and accessible will take less time than uh, than the, than the uh, vehicle transportation, the road network, um, right? But it will still require moving the bridge out of the out of the waterway.